When I first started trying to eat healthier years ago, sometimes the strangest situations would make me feel like I was missing out. One of those was donuts at the office. So I created this sugar-free keto donuts recipe with almond flour. And if you're tired of missing out too, now you don't have to. These donuts are sweet, cake-like, and they have the perfect coating just like powdered sugar. Hi everyone, it's Maya from wholesomeyum.com and I make easy, healthy recipes with 10 ingredients or less. So today I'm showing you how to make keto donuts. These have just three grams net carbs, less than one gram of sugar, they're gluten-free, and they taste so much like the real thing. Like I said, these are more of a cake donut, but if you want more of a pillowy and chewy glazed donut, I have one like that in my Easy Keto Carboholics cookbook. Both of them are delicious though, and this one that I've been making for years is still one of my favorites. It's super easy and it only takes 30 minutes. Let's do this. We're going to start with one cup of Wholesome Yum blanched almond flour. I created this because so many brands just make baked goods too coarse and gritty, and this one is super fine. So I'll go ahead and add this to the bowl. I don't recommend substitutes for this because different flours just work differently. Coconut flour in particular is very drying, so the recipe would need a lot of changes to be able to support that. Next, we'll add a quarter cup of Bestie Sweetener. That's the pink one right here. So this also is going to have a big impact on the final result. I actually used to make these donuts with erythritol, and the result was not nearly as good. Erythritol is more drying, it can have a cooling effect, it can even sometimes crystallize. So that's why I really prefer Bestie now. This is a blend of monk fruit and allulose, so no erythritol in there. Bestie's going to prevent your donuts from being too dry. And we'll add two teaspoons of baking powder. This seems like kind of a lot for the amount of flour in this recipe, but since almond flour does not rise as well as wheat flour, we need to use a little more than normal and make sure it's fresh so that it works really well. And a teaspoon of cinnamon here as well. You can omit the cinnamon if you're not a cinnamon fan. I think cinnamon donuts are delicious. And an eighth of a teaspoon of sea salt. This is just a small amount. It won't make your donuts salty, but it does help balance the sweetness and it actually brings out the sweetness a little bit too. And we'll just whisk this to combine. You can stir with a spatula if you like, but I prefer a whisk because it breaks up any lumps. And you can see because this almond flour is so fine, it does have a few lumps in there, but the whisk breaks those up pretty easily. And once we blend this with the wet ingredients, we'll get rid of all of that. Now we'll combine the wet ingredients. You'll need a quarter cup of unsalted melted butter. You can use coconut oil here if you like. And I just melted this in the microwave for convenience, but you can melt it on the stovetop in a double boiler if you prefer. Now, before you add the other wet ingredients, make sure that they are at room temperature. Otherwise, the butter is going to clump and solidify and not mix into your batter nicely. So I actually forgot to bring my eggs to room temperature, but there's an easy trick to this. Just place them in some water and they're already room temperature. They were only in here for like a minute. So first I'm going to add a quarter cup of unsweetened almond milk. You can even use vanilla almond milk here if you like, or other types of milk will work as well. Dairy milk would not be keto, but you can use coconut milk beverage or even heavy cream here. And we'll add two large eggs. And half a teaspoon of vanilla. You can add a little more if you really like vanilla, or if you skip the cinnamon earlier. And go ahead and whisk that all together until it's nice and smooth. Now we'll combine the wet and dry ingredients. Easy peasy. Pour the wet ingredients into the dry, and we'll just whisk that all together until it's completely smooth. Make sure to get any dry ingredients from the bottom and the sides. The batter should be runny just like this, but not totally liquid. Now you're ready to fill your donut pan. Make sure it's not scratched and it has a good nonstick surface because these keto donuts do stick easily. So this is the pan I use. I'll link it down below. I really like it because it really doesn't stick and the lighter color means that the donuts don't get too dark. But even though it's good nonstick, I'm still gonna grease this. Otherwise, these really, really stick easily. <laughs> I like to use cooking spray just because it's so much faster, but you can also grease with butter or even coconut oil if you like. Make sure you get it on like the sides as well. You need a generous amount. Now my least favorite part is filling these because this batter is quite runny, but I'll do my best here. You can use a spoon or a measuring cup. I'm gonna try both here and see which one I land on. I've done both in the past. You wanna fill these about three quarter of the way. I think I like the measuring cup. I'm gonna stick with that. Don't 
don't worry if you make a bit of a mess like I did. I usually keep paper towels next to me when I'm doing this because it's almost impossible not to drift the batter all over the place. If you wanna make this super clean, you can pour the batter into a piping bag and then pour it that way. I just didn't want that extra stuff. It's easier to just wipe it afterward. Bake the keto donuts for about 15 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit until golden brown. This is for the pan I used. It might be a bit faster in a dark pan or longer in a silicone pan. Check that these are done by using a toothpick. Just insert it into the center to make sure that it comes out clean. Now, before we try to get these out, make sure they cool completely in the pan. Otherwise, they are going to fall apart if you try to move them right away. So these are finally cooled. I think I lied when I said the hardest part was spooning the batter into the cavities. I think the waiting was even harder, but now we're ready to remove these. So I'm gonna take this little silicone spatula. You can use a knife, but it can scratch the pan, so I prefer to use this. And just run that along the edges. And then as you do that, you can see if it's not stuck, then it will start to rotate like this. If it's not doing that and it's stuck, sometimes it sticks in the middle here, then you can use a knife and you can actually cut away the center here to run the spatula around the inside as well. This one seems like it doesn't need it. Just gently lift from the bottom and transfer to a plate. And I like to flip them over when I plate them because the bottom side actually looks nice. So these low carb donuts are done, but possibly the most important step is the powdered sugar coating. Of course, it's not real sugar. I used to coat these with erythritol, but the cooling sensation was just, well, not that good. So I switched to using powdered Bestie instead. If you want more of a granulated consistency, then you can try using the regular Bestie, the pink one, uh, but that one is still finer than a granulated sugar. So I like the powdered anyway, it's like a powdered sugar. And we actually improved this last year. It used to be not quite as fine as powdered sugar, but now you can see this is like super fine like powdered sugar. So just dip the donuts in there and get rid of any excess and it'll stick really well. My older version with erythritol, I used to have to dip these in butter and then dip in the erythritol, but I don't even have to do that with these. The powdered coating just sticks anyway. And this is about half a cup of powdered Bestie that I have here. A shallow bowl like this is nice for this because it lets you coat the donuts on all sides pretty easily. As you're doing this, just tilt whatever you need to do to kind of get it on all the places. You won't get some in the middle here, but that's okay. Still plenty of powdered coating. And half a cup is usually enough for this, but if for some reason you run out, feel free to add more to the bowl. This is zero net carbs, so it doesn't really matter how much you use. You can store these keto donuts at room temperature for up to a few days in the fridge for up to a week, or freeze them for up to six months. So they're really versatile. Make them ahead, make them enjoy right away. I'm ready to dig into one right now. Sweet, moist, cakey, feels like dessert for breakfast without all the sugar. And if you need another easy keto breakfast idea for something you might have been missing, try these keto bagels next.